Okay, so, so far in data structures, we've learned about storing simple data in arrays or associative arrays. So, you know, an array of all numbers uh, to represent student grades or an array of all names for nicknames, things like that. Um, under data options, I want to talk about some, some more complex ways of um, dealing with more complex data. Um, so there's a couple of options here. Um, all of these will work, um, but there's, you know, in some scenarios, maybe one option is better than the other. Uh, you might have your favorite, um, but I'm going to introduce all three to you. We're going to look at parallel arrays, two-dimensional arrays, and arrays of objects or arrays of associative arrays. And the idea here is I want to store more than uh, simple data. I don't just, don't just want to store an array of numbers. I want to store maybe an array of um, related data. So for example, if we did a, a bubble, I want to have a bubble. For sure, I need X and Y values, right? And I could store those X and Y values in two separate arrays called parallel arrays, where the first bubble, the X value would be 200, the Y value would be 300. The second bubble, the X value would be 400, Y value 300, etc. Or we could store the X and Y values in two-dimensional array, an array with arrays inside of it. Here's the X and Y of the first bubble. Here's the X and Y of the second bubble excuse me, etc. Or you could do an array of objects, right? So you've got an array, here's the first bubble, second bubble, etc. So I'd like to, um, to go through these different options. We'll make a, a little program with these bubbles moving around and we'll do it using um, a whole bunch of bubbles using these three different techniques. So what do I want to do? Um, Let's go to my data structures course activities. I want to take a canvas animation template. I'm going to paste that. And I want to start just with this template and we'll do um, bubbles. Maybe bubbles. Uh, hold on, let's go bubbles data options. Okay. So we'll open this with code. All right. Main.js. Uh, bubble options. Okay, and we'll start with parallel arrays. So before my main program loop here, I'm going to create my, my variables. Uh, whoops, global variables. Let's zoom in a little bit, make sure you can see this easily. Okay. So like I said, with parallel arrays, um, maybe my bubbles for sure, I want to store X values. So I'm going to have an array of X values. And I have an array of Y values. And if all I want is one bubble, let's go 200, 300 like that. This will be the X of the first bubble and the th Y of the, of the third, I'm sorry, of the first bubble as well at 300. So if I want to draw this bubble, um, maybe I should add my libraries here. Let's go to my libraries and copy. And let's make a new folder for these. Uh, let's make a JS folder, actually, and we'll paste that into there. Maybe we'll take our main.js and put it into there as well. And now this is deleted from disk. Oh, um, oh I just resaved it. What am I doing? There it is. Okay, and then we should remove this one. Sorry, <laughs> failed delete permanently. All right. And in here, I'll have to just change this to JS slash main.js, beautiful. And then we'll go script source equals JS slash math extensions, because I'll do, I'll do some random stuff, and JS slash my graphics, because my bubbles are going to be circles, and instead of doing that begin path and arc and stuff like that, I'd like to just do my fill circle. I think I have a fill circle in here. Uh, stroke circle, I'll do the stroke circle, X, Y, R. Okay, uh, so main.js, there we go. We'll do this again. Sorry, bubble objects, or bubble data op options. And for now, oh, i got to redo this all. Uh, global variables, can't spell, let X vowels be assigned an array. Let y vowels be assigned an array. 200, 300. I'll make a little note here. These are parallel arrays to store bubble data. 
Wonderful. All right, in here I'm going to draw the one bubble that I have. So I would simply go um, context dot stroke style is assigned. What color do I want my bubbles to be? Let's go a nice green context dot stroke circle. Now the x value is going to be x vowels at position zero. The y value will be y vowels at position zero, and the radius I'm just going to pick a value twenty. Okay, let's save that. Let's run it. Uh, make sure it works. Hit F12, and I've got a problem. Stroke circle is not a function at main.js line 25. Uh, script source JS, my graphics.js, and why, why, why? Oh, of course. Oh, gotta wake up. Um, remember when I use my graphics library, I need to do the whole init graphics 800, 600, and that will set the canvas size and create all of those extra methods that are available to me. It's been a while since I used my graphics library. Okay. Hey, there it is. Awesome. Okay. And if we wanted this thing to move, maybe I could do this too. I could say, hey, um, x vowels at position zero plus equals um, math dot random decimal between negative five and five y vowels at position zero plus equals math dot random decimal negative five to five and that should yeah there's my randomly moving bubble jittering around the screen okay cool now um, if I wanted more bubbles the whole point of this was to why, why have an array if I'm only just have one thing in it? Is I can now go comma, 500, and comma, um, 100. So that would create another bubble with an x value of 500 and a y value of 100. And I could just copy and paste this and change this to 1. Oops, 1. And let's copy and paste this and change these to one as well. Okay, so now I've got a bubble here and a bubble there. Beautiful. And if I wanted another bubble, I could just go um, 300, comma 500, and then again, we could just copy and paste this, two, two, and copy and paste that, two, two. And now I've got three bubbles, yay! And of course, I could add as many of these as I'd like, although it would get really annoying having to copy and paste all this stuff. So remember, arrays, one of the powers of arrays was this idea of loops, right? So I can traverse my array, starting at zero, going up to x vowels dot length. Now, with parallel arrays, it's interesting because we could actually go x vowels dot length or y vowels dot length because they're parallel, they'll always be the same length or they should always be the same length. Okay, so I could do that, and then I could cut that and paste it into here, and instead of the zero, I'm gonna use I. And then I don't need these, because it'll loop through all of those wonderful values. And then the same thing here, I could set up a loop here. Uh, type. And again, cut and paste, and change that to an I, change that to an I, and get rid of those. There's my three bubbles going around, and if I wanted another one, let's go 100, comma, 400. There's the fourth one. Let's go 600, 300 etc. And if I really wanted to get crazy, I could use loops, right? Let's initialize x vowels to be an empty array, y vowels be an empty array. And then I could loop for however many of these things I wanted, maybe 20. And we could just go x vowels dot push, 
And what do I want to push? A random um, decimal between 0 and canvas.width. And then y vowels, because they're parallel, we have to, if I push something into the x vowels, they also have to push something into the y vowels. Math.random decimal between 0 and canvas.height. Okay, so that allows me to create my parallel arrays using a loop. And I should now have, uh, is that 20 of them? Let's change that to 50. We've now got 50 of them. Beautiful. Okay. A um, couple other little things here. Um, one thing I might do for efficiency, I usually like to separate my logic and my drawing. But in this case here, I'm looping through all of the values and I'm looping through them all again. Um, I'm thinking I could actually just, often I separate the logic and drawing just to make sure I don't mess up something with a drawing or accidentally draw something and then clear the rectangle over top of it. Um, but I think for efficiency, I should be able to do this, right? Move bubbles and then draw, or move bubble and then draw bubble. And then we don't need uh, that section there. Okay, cool. And of course, change this number to whatever you want, 150. And you got lots of it. Okay, now what if I wanted to store more of uh, these parallel arrays? If I wanted them all to be a different size, I could go let R vowels for radius values. And then I could go R vowels dot push math dot random decimal between, I don't know, maybe my smallest size is 10 and my largest size is 40. Let's see what that looks like. It won't look like anything until I actually change it. This is where I draw my radius, right? So I would go R vowels at position I. And now each bubble should have its own unique size. Okay. What about colors? Right? Maybe I want to have a let color vowels be assigned an empty array. And let's just set up. I'm going to try this. Some color names. Uh, red, green, blue, orange, magenta, purple. Um, I could do random RGB values, but I'm going to select from a, a set number of, na of names here. Um, that's good for now, actually. And then in my math extensions library, ooh, I don't have it in here yet. I want to create a function called random elements, which will take in an array, and it'll randomly select and return an element from an array. So to do that, I'm going to simply go return an array at position, and I want to select a random element, math.random int between 0 and the length of the array. Right, so that random int will get me a random index between the zero, because that's where the index starts, and up to the length of the array, and it'll look up the value and do it. So that's called random element. And inside of here, I'm going to go color vowels dot push, and now I can go math dot random element and pass in the color names, and it should randomly select the color name. And then inside of here, we'll put this inside of the loop before I draw. And we'll set the stroke style to be color vowels at position I. Oh, I hope that works. Oh, uh, that error, error. Okay, math extensions line 20. Oh, what did I do? Math.randomElement is assigned a function. I always do that. Those function expressions mess me up every time. Hey, there it is. So random colors. Anyway, the key idea here, right, is these parallel arrays. I'm storing the X values, the Y values, the radius values, and the color values for all of these different bubbles. Position 0 in the array is the first bubble. In all four of these arrays is the first bubble. Position 1 would be the second. Position 2 would be the third bubble. And you look up in each of these arrays. Okay, that's it for parallel arrays. I'm going to modify this program in the next video to be two-dimensional arrays. Hope that made sense, and we'll see you in the next video.